With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get times two, Kim, on your captains. I saw you only had times one. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has, and how the game flows through him. On your captains, you can get times two on your Kim. You just add it. They had just updated it. Whenever uh, last Wednesday, I think it was, they added that. They updated the captain. They all, they all get times two. And there's a glitch going on right now where um, any any captains, like for yours, for example, I, I'm assuming you had him at that overall for a while now. Any players you had at least 85 and with your team cam going before they update that shit, and then you add the times two, it actually counts as times three. Because they're like adding, it's like glitching out. It's not. I don't think it's intended to be that way, but I just advise that you never change your chem. I don't know why you would, or don't downgrade like any players that you had at least 85, because 85 is like the minimum overall they need to be to be able to change the chem or whatever on them. So, do you have any other captains that are that you have like at least to 85 and had the Dolphins on them? Oh. Here comes Sanders on the toss right. Well, it works with any of them. Any of them that had a that had your the team came on it or whatever. They just got to be at least 85, obviously, and then you had to have had them all with that shit before last went there, whenever they had that shit. Wow. Everyone at least gets times two, though. The times three is the only part that's glitched. So. They just updated it. So they just updated it. So now they just, they just by default get times two now instead of regular times one. Nothing extra that you gotta do. Or, Oh, that was fourth. I didn't even realize that was fourth down. <laughs> I was like, damn, I was going to get pissed off because like two times in that, yeah, I should have had a pick. What the fuck? What the fuck is your guy doing on Dre Archer? Did you see that? One of your D linemen was like on top of Dre Archer, and that dude's like three times the size of him. I know I'm toxic. So you're the, you're the another person I've faced today that has like a combination of weird ass like teams. So like you're you're a Dolphins fan, I'm assuming, right? You got the Dolphins shit on your captain, but you're a well. That's that's a, that's like his default cam. So you just never changed it. Cause that's just, huh? No, you just change it. Like you upgrade them, and you can change. You, if they're 85 overall, you can, then you can uh, make them any team cam on them. I didn't know you just because he just, so. But the the captains will by default have like whatever their like feature team is, like for uh for um. Crowder, I guess that that was the guy you had. Um, he's Dolphins by default, so, but I guess you just he just has it on him because you never changed it. So that times three shit won't work. That times three shit won't work on him then if you ever want to change the Cowboys, which I assume is your wait, theme team you probably have. So, that's why I brought that shit up because I was like, oh, you're you a Dolphins theme team or something. You, but everything I just said, every, everything I just said, just kind of. <laughs> doesn't count now. I mean, they, they'll still get times two, but that times three shit I was talking about doesn't, won't, won't do anything. So you don't even, you don't even care about theme teams, you just kind of just have players. Ooh. 
pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now to get in there and knock another one away. I think maybe that tougher rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder. Yes, indeed, that time. Lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. Here's Vic. Nope. Wow, he caught that. Does Barry have good catching? That's crazy. A running back was able to catch that shit sandwiched between two people. Wow. That's crazy. Cowboys theme team is pretty expensive too. I guess maybe not so much now, but because a lot of the expensive cards got reduxed. But they sure do get a lot of limiteds. There was a point where like two or three of uh, they came up with like back to back limited receivers, and they were all like over a mil. See, better not button catch pickings. Feel free to talk shit, because I know I'm toxic. I know Josh Allen's not fucking causing fumbles. He probably fatigues himself by trying to hit stick someone. Damn. <laughs> he literally, he fucking abused your receiver. <laughs> It's like one of those old school hits that are illegal. No, you're not hitting small as Archer. <laughs> That dude's fast, but I always get fucking worried any kind of contact he makes. Because that dude's a fucking twig. Ah. Surprisingly, he has never fumbled for me. For the short career he's had on my team. Why? Because he did he fumble for you? Wow. <laughs> it's probably supposed to be that Steelers luck. Because he really should fumble easily, and he hasn't for me. It is. <laughs> I was about to say earlier, talk shit, like speak your mind. I don't want you to feel like you can't speak your mind. I know I play Tuck and Talks like I want to hear all the salt. <laughs> you 
fucking. Th that's the greatest thing though for for me when like all your players start tripping over each other. That's the greatest. Like when they otherwise would actually be able to make a play and they get tripped up, or like the user tries to go over and make a play, or they get and they get stuck behind a defender. It's the greatest thing for me. It wasn't the greatest throw. I don't know why this shit was. This shit should, should have been way more outside. So you're a Cowboys fan? I don't know if you ever said that. What the? What the fuck? <laughs> you're the second person in a row now. Where they like? They seem like they're having like a midlife crisis deciding the team. The other guy that I just played. They had it was the Patriots Stadium, but they were in Falcons uniforms, and they said they were a fan of some other team. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> the Dallas here well, they said they were a Patriots fan. They wore the Falcons because they didn't like the Patriots uniforms, and I, I guess the Falcons home uniforms do look pretty cool. Any anything in like in black looks cool. I think uh, our color rush and their color rush are the coolest ones. I think the, it, it, I don't know. I think the, isn't the Falcons color rush like it's uh, black with like the red lettering? Or is that Niners? Yeah, I might, I might be thinking of the red Niners. Hardly anyone uses their color rush uniforms anymore. God, Hendricks is slow. The stupid fatigue shit. That update that it allowed yesterday, or was it, I guess it was today, with the fatigue. It's glitched. It's only supposed to like affect line, uh, DBs, but it, it, for some reason, also affects linebackers. They said they're going to fix that shit, though. Ooh. Because... The whole point was to affect to uh, cause fatigue against like DBs who aren't like natural blitzers, but it's also affecting like people like Lawrence Taylor, like guys that are actually blitzers. <laughs> like, why are they getting fucking tired? It's been really annoying today. What the fuck? <laughs> Porter is not short. Why is he getting the ball thrown over his head? How tall is he? Because I'm sure he's not any taller than Porter. Is he like a six foot five receiver? I just feel like that shouldn't make much of a difference. Three inches. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. 
No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. Oh, nice I didn't job. think he could fucking jump for that. That was dumb. I saw you come down, and I still thought I could thuggle over your head. That was dumb. Like, Vic's lob throws don't feel like they, they arc very much. second half it was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard this fielded right at the goal line and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. the Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive this offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter well quarters number one and two entertaining we saw some good offense points put up Charles and all tied on the scoreboard and it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost a will here in the first half and now here in the second half getting the ball first you've got to think hey we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half but if I'm a defensive player all I'm thinking is can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense 79 yards rushing for him now to this point. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. To throw, Vic. Finds Pickens out right. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll run on first down. Archer, and he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. From the 34-yard line, here's second down in the yard. They'll keep it on the ground. Archer. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Gets this out wide to Pickens. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Now a handoff up the middle. Archer, and he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. On third down, Archer, and he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. 
That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. So on fourth down here, Mike Tomlin says, let's just get three. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And with it, they'll take the lead at 24-21. They don't get a touchdown here on the opening drive of the third quarter, but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No, absolutely. You keep the pressure on, right? You go downfield, get some points up on the board, and hope that you've motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. About set for this next drive by the Cowboys offense. And they find themselves down on the scoreboard following the field goal a moment ago. And I think even though they trail in the game now, I would consider that a win for their defense. And that's probably what they're telling the offense when they get to the bench. Hey, the onus is on you guys now. Get back out there and get us the lead back. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Now a dump off here complete. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Vic with a give to Sanders. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Three quarters have come and gone. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Vic now. Pressure comes and the Steelers take him down. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Working out of the gun, Michael Vick. He's airing it out for Williams. Now he backs it away and it falls down and could play. That was for the lead right there. They know they're in a position where fortune favors the brave. So they took their shot, but couldn't connect. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a pro spheroid, which means it's going to bounce, buddy, and you never know where it's going to end up. Well, for that seven to start out, that's complete. Yeah, he's going to get this up to the 24-yard line. Vick's going to change the play. On first down, Archer. 93 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now, I could be in that huddle with that offensive line, and I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. We've got control of this thing. Get him behind us, and let's go. Their time to shine. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll keep it on the ground. Archer, he's going to be stopped short of the first down as they'll get to him at about the 33. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Now Vic on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Mike Tomlin takes a shot here, but to no avail. And Dallas, they'll take over in terrific field position. Here's first and ten.
A give running left. It's Sanders. Well, somehow he was able to sidestep that first tackler, but still hit and taken down behind the line. Vic. Gets this one to use check. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. Vic to throw. And this one incomplete. Threw it down at the feet of his receiver. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to save it every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. T.J. Watt in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. And we all know how talented this guy is. He's calling the signals for him. But even the best in the game, they can struggle against a good, cohesive zone coverage. Can't find a gap in the secondary quick enough, and he ends up taking a sack. It's caught by Sanders. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. Desperation time. Vic on fourth down. He's got to complete to Gronkowski. Well, the Cowboys are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. They'll run with Sanders. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow. Carlson's extra point up and good, and that will make this a four-point game. So after the made field goal, here's Carlson to send it away. And they will ring it down a couple of yards shy of the 30. This is first and ten. I believe in you, D. I believe in you. Now Michael Vick. And got his man complete. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. Here's Vic. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one, got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. It may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. They'll come up now on second down. to throw. Buying time to his left. Brad, I think he's just grateful to get back to the line of scrimmage and avoid not just losing yardage, but a big hit on that play as well. That defense closed on him quick and forced a quick surrender out of bounds. They'll come to the line. This is third and three. They'll look to throw. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. So this defense, they looked a little shaky to start the drive. The bottom line, they're a play away from finishing it off. They rocked them a little bit on this drive, didn't they? But as you and I both know, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. They have a chance to end it right here. Victor throw on fourth down. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside.
One last shot for Michael Vick. And GG's.